Welcome to the struggle of all species to be free. We are the burning rage of this dying planet. The war of greed ravages the earth, and species die out every day. The Earth Liberation Front works to speed up the collapse of industry, to scare the rich, and to undermine the foundations of the state. We embrace social and deep ecology as a practical resistance movement. We have to show the enemy that we are willing to fight for what is sacred. In those words, the Earth Liberation Front launched what was potentially the most economically devastating campaign of sabotage in this country's history. It cost well over $100 million in damages so far to government agencies and corporations that uh, basically their daily practices are annihilating the natural environment. Um, on a number of occasions, it has been publicly, the Earth Liberation Front has been publicly proclaimed as the FBI's number one domestic terrorist priority. We're about to watch a new documentary. It's called If a Tree Falls, the story of the Earth Liberation Front. Uh, the filmmakers like to point out that the subtitle is A Story of the Earth Liberation Front, not THE Story of the Earth Liberation Front. Um, it focuses on the case of Daniel McGowan and a couple it puts uh, specific attention on a couple actions which he faced charges for. But during the period that the film covers, that's from 1996 until 2001, the Earth Liberation Front uh, were responsible for three dozen actions very similar to the ones that you'll see in here. Um, and there were a number, a large number of actions claimed by similar organizations uh, that are lesser known and yet more actions that went altogether unclaimed for whatever reason, but we're clearly part of the same movement, the same struggle. To give you a sense, uh, beyond what this film says, uh, of some of the uh, atmosphere, the climate of what was going on at that time, I'm going to give you just some examples of some of those actions, real quick. Um, a $1.7 million arson on June 1998 of U.S. Forest Land Management Center in Olympia, Washington. In the ELF's communique, they announced, we decided to honor the wildlife of the Pacific Northwest and the forest they call home by having a bonfire at the facilities which make it a daily routine to kill and destroy wildlife. This war on wildlife and nature must end. We will not stop until it does. A, mo a million dollar arson in December of 1998 at the corporate headquarters of U.S. Forest Industries. The communique said, this was in retribution for all the wild forests lost to greedy like Jerry Bramwell, U.S. Forest Industry President. This action is payback and a warning to all those responsible. We do not sleep and we will not quit. A $1.7 million arson that leveled the corporate offices of forest product giant Boise Cascade in December of 1999. That communique said, let this be a warning to all greedy multinational corporations who don't respect their ecosystems. A million dollar arson at the Michigan State University offices of a Monsanto and USAID funded geneticist who the ELF announced was working to, quote, force developing nations in Asia, Latin America, and Africa to switch, to switch from nat natural crop plants to genetically engineered sweet potatoes, corn, banana, and pineapples. A February 2001 arson of a Delta and Pineland warehouse storing genetically engineered cotton seed. The communique read, Delta and Pineland continues to pursue its Terminator technology despite a global opposition to the genetic engineering of plants to produce sterile seeds. Engineering a suicide sequence into the plant world is the most dangerous new technology since nuclear power and needs to be stopped. Since the period that this film covers, the Earth Operation Front has continued to engage in a number of extremely devastating actions, and I'm going to give you just a few of those to give a sense. A million dollar arson at U.S. Forest Service Northeast, Re Northeast Research Station in Pennsylvania's Allegheny Forest in August of 2002, citing the agency's, quote, blatant disregard for the sanctity of life and its perfect nat natural balance, indifference to strong public opposition, and the irrevocable acts of extreme violence they perpetrate against the earth daily. 
a $50 million arson on August 2003 of a 206 unit condominium development under construction in the San Diego area. Graffiti was left on the scene reading, if you build it, we will burn it. A $7 million arson in March of 2008 that destroyed four multi-million dollar homes and the Seattle Street of Dreams luxury home show. The buildings were part of an RCD, which is a rural cluster development, built on a watershed that actually had the audacity to proclaim itself as green. <clears throat> this film handles a lot of issues very well, um, but there is one major point that it doesn't really adequately address, and you really need to understand that uh, in order to really thoroughly understand the Earth Liberation Front and why people would take such extreme risk uh, to protect the Earth. And that point, or that, that issue, is, is the real levity, the real weight and severity of the environmental problem. Most environmental organizations operate as though they... Partnership. Yeah, most, most environmental organizations operate as though they're working towards some kind of a quality of life issue. Uh, the Earth Liberation Month does not view the environmental situation as a quality of life issue. It views it as a life or death struggle. Continuing to react to the overwhelming slaughter of the earth, the water, the air, the land, as if it were something that could be solved with tax deductible donations and going green, whatever that is, is irrational. There's no historical precedent to it. In fact, the only precedent there is to that level of reformism is that it mainly appeases people's conscience while not addressing fundamental change, while not activating fundamental change. Destroying the water table, which we're doing, the web of life, the ozone layer, the oceans, the forests, isn't just a global catastrophe, it's suicide. How are we supposed to survive without fresh air to breathe? How are we supposed to live without clean water to drink? How are we supposed to live in a collapsed ecosystem? We've been seeing, we've been seeing the, day, the results of our society's environmental policy for generations now, and things are only promising to get much, much worse if we don't drastically change now. Addressing the environmental problem in a way that actually has the potential of leading towards fundamental change is not something that's heroic that maybe one person or a small group of people are doing. It's something that is a responsibility of all of us. It's our responsibility to our communities. It's our responsibility to our families, to our children, and our grandchildren. And no matter, regardless, of how powerful the enemy is, or how extreme the personal consequences that it may be, our responsibility to address this very real, very serious situation remains intact 100%. What the Earth Liberation Fund has done is awakened the greedy, self-interested, short-sighted authorities to the consequences of not operating in the best interest of the people. And it should remind all of us of the power that we have because it so clearly sets an example that we can fight back. <clears throat>